Okay. It's preparing. So I am live. So. Do you want me to come down there? Do you want me to have to introduce I'll get in and say hey? So I'll, I'll tell you what I'm about to do. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to come to you. Are you Hi, Bill Yannick here, your Connect CEO. Welcome to the end of day two of our virtual connection. It is our virtual happy hour. It's what you've been probably waiting for for the last several hours. And we have two famous uh, celebrity bartenders, and your CEO is going to get the heck out of the way. So it's Sam Thomas and Chris Norton. I got that right, right? Yeah, I did. Thank and I'm going to stop talking now because I'm out of my depth, but they are going to do a whole bunch of cool stuff over the next half hour or so. So welcome. Have a great time. And thanks for being here on day two. Guys, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you.
Hello, hello. My name's Chris. This is Sammy. Uh, we're going to be making drinks for you today. Um, we picked four classic drinks that we're going to kind of teach everybody how to make uh, at home. These are things that you can do that are simple. You can find uh, these at all these supplies at local grocery stores. Um, we're going to do four drinks today. We're going to start off with a mojito. Uh, then we're going to do a pina colada, a chocolate martini, and we're going to finish off with an old fashioned. Um, we're going to make different. Uh, we're going to show you a classic version all fresh ingredients, all uh, hand squeezed juices, all house made syrups. Um, we try to make everything, we try to juice everything ourselves, um, make all of our syrups, make everything. And then we'll come up with the different variations you can add uh, that you can do at home too. Um, so if you have any questions, please let us know. They'll let us, uh, they'll speak to us on the questions. <laughs> and uh, I think that's it. I'm gonna turn it over to Sammy. She's gonna start with the mojito Yay. and then uh, we'll go there. Okay. okay. Mojito time. So usually, um, Chris actually grew his own mint, but you can obviously buy mint at any grocery store. But um, do you want to really get it. get crazy <laughs> here? I grow this mint. I grow all my own herbs and uh, uh, try to use them it's all, store mint. them all. It's uh, it's sweet mint. Sweet mint. So you can grow your own mint if you get crazy. Yeah. So I'm really just gonna add uh, about 12 leaves. But I'm gonna muddle the leaves with the stems and everything. I'll put it right at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. I like mine um, a little bit more minty. That's why I love mint juleps, mojitos, uh, just all the different kinds of variations. Uh, so after you add your mint, um, we'd like to build in pint glasses so we can see what we're building and smell it and make sure it's all good before we start shaking it. Uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of simple syrup, less than a quarter to that uh, pint glass. And then I'm gonna take a muddler. Any muddler will be good. I'm just gonna get the oils out of that mint. Don't really have to smush it up too much, but just enough. For everybody at home, this is simple syrup. It's just simple one to one water and sugar. Um, we put it on the stove, boil it, and until um, the till it goes clear. So it's real simple to make simple syrup at home. Yeah. So you can make it and use it for anything. Yeah, you don't need to buy that out of the bottle. You just make it. <laughs> All right, and then I'm gonna add an ounce of that simple syrup. One ounce. And then we just juiced um, some limes to make that fresh lime juice. Then we filter out that pulp. So I'm gonna add a, an ounce of that lime juice. Okay. Oops. We like to jigger the any syrups, purees, juices, so we can make sure that the correct amount's coming out instead of free pouring everything. And then I'm gonna use a uh, uh, the Florida Cana white rum. I'm going to do two ounces of that rum right there. I poured a little bit extra. Don't judge. <laughs> and then I'm going to shake it. You go ahead. I'm going to get ice cream for you. Oh, thank you. I'm going to fill up my shaker tin full of ice. And then I'm just going to add the liquid to it. Make sure that's snapped on tight. I'm gonna start shaking. Thank you. Well, well, well. Okay. Shake it pretty well. I like to shake it until I can feel this metal mixing tin nice and frozen. Then I'm gonna actually double strain it into a pint glass. I got the glass. What? I put that ice in it. Oh, thank you. I forgot we got those other glasses. Thank you, Chris. Double strain it. Let's get every single drop out. Thank you. Set this right here for right now. Thank you. And we're gonna top it with some soda water. There we go. All right. And I'm just gonna box it back and forth so I can mix that soda water in. You don't wanna shake any soda water because it will explode on you. So you just wanna kind of toss it back and forth to mix it. 
a dead little forward, taking mini showers. Uh, and then all you want to do after that, then is garnish it with a nice um, mint little bush. I'm going to spank it to get all the oils out of it. I'm going to pick a nice little lime wheel. Put it on top. Come here. I got a little baby straw. Yeah. So I don't know. If you can see it. Yeah, buddy. It'll be good on any night, especially a hot Texas summer night for sure. Let's see. I'll make sure she, <laughs> make sure she's still doing all right. So show me a variation. Show them a variation. Okay. Um I like raspberry anything, especially raspberry mojitos. Uh those are really easy too. So great job. Thanks. I'll drink it. I'm going to taste it too. We will, for sure. Minty. It's good. Uh, so I'm going to do a raspberry mojito this time for our mojito. Show them um, all fruits. So you can do any variations. variations. Raspberry, strawberry. Okay. We did bring um, blueberries, but you could do blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, pineapple. Spicy mojitos. I don't know. You can just go crazy if you want, or you can combine raspberry, blueberry, strawberry. You can just get really creative with them. Um, and you go anything goes well with rum, uh, mint, and lime juice. So um, feel free to get creative. But I'm not just going to use um, raspberries for this mojito. Hmm. These are nice and juicy. I'm going to put about four. What do you think? Four or five? I'll put yeah, five. Put five. five of the nice juicy raspberries and i'm going to add my mint again same amount of mint sprinkle that on top i was going to grab all of it and then i'm going to muddle all this together with a little bit of simple syrup take that muddler again and then it's going to mix it all together and get all the oils and juice out of those raspberries and mint from here is the same recipe as before. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So these are really easy. You can make these. You batch them out. So I'm just going to do a little less of simple syrup this time. Less than an ounce, I mean. An ounce of lime. Okay. And then the same amount of rum. All right, I'm going to shake it again. Thank you. My favorite part. <laughs> Good. Double strain it again. There we go. Sorry. I like to double strain it so you're not uh, choking on any pulp, especially if you're drinking it through straws. Just mix it for a smoother drinking experience if you double strain it. Last drop again. Thank you. And then we're going to top it with soda water again. Just a little bit. Box it one more time. Let's see. I'm going to use this one. See that nice pink color you can get from those raspberries. I'm going to take my mint garnish. Use the same strainer you know what Well, <laughs> oh well. Okie dokie. Let's see if this will stay for me. Okay. Let's draw this tasted. 
tasty. Sorry, I know we're in COVID, but. Mm. Is that good? That's real good. Okay, good. Sorry. I don't know if you can see it, but mm -hmm. I'll reach over and bring it up a little bit. Yay! It's so pretty. That's awesome. All right. I'm going to set these to the side. Oh, yeah. All righty. All right. So there's the two mojitos, different ideas, different things. These will need to be washed out to make sure I have two cleaners. So if y'all have any questions, please uh, let them know. They'll ask us just to go over that recipe one more time. Um, so basically, we're going to get down to the ingredients right here. Um, rum. So you always start off with, do we use all that mint? Or is it all the mint? So you're always going to have mint. You're always going to start off modeling mint. Uh, I'd say uh, six to eight pieces, 12 if you like uh, a little bit more minty, then you're going to have your simple syrup that you made. It's going to be uh, an ounce of simple syrup. How much did you use? An ounce. ounce of lime juice too. I'm sorry. We keep these equal. So we got an ounce of lime juice, ounce of simple syrup, um, and two ounces of rum with the muddled mint. Shake it cold, top it with soda water, um, turn it over one time and mix the soda water up with the rest of the ingredients and you got a mojito all day long. Uh, Add a little fruit to it. Uh, if you want to add raspberries, remember raspberries, strawberries, you just want to get enough and get it to your taste of what you like. Um, you can fool around with these at home and make these all day and you can come up with a variation that works best for you. Okay, now the next one we're going to get into is the pina colada. Um, it's springtime around here, so or springtime right now, so we've chosen a lot of, uh, we went with all classics, but then we're also in the growing season, that's why we have the mint. What you need? Um, and so we went with the classics, but it's also we went with the pina colada because it's getting into summertime. Um, it's starting to get hot. We did have a cold spell last night, um, but we're going to be getting into the summer weather. So we're trying to think of springy, then we're getting into the uh, festive type drinks. Everybody loves a pina colada. It's really simple, easy to do at home. Um, you're going to need, need a blender. Uh, huh? you, don't need a blender. you don't need a blender. We're doing these without a blender. I'm going to show you how to uh, make a pina colada where we shake it um, so you don't have to worry about the... Uh, so someone asked, simple syrup is one to one sugar and water. So uh, one cup of sugar, one cup of water, put it on the stove, boil it. I like to get the water just a little bit hot and then pour the sugar in there as it's warming up. And then when it goes clear like this, you pull it off the stove, let it cool, put it in a bottle. You're good. This will last for three to four weeks in your refrigerator. Just make sure it's uh, closed off airtight and you'll be good to go. Um, so I'm missing one thing, I'm sorry. Pineapple juice. Uh, so pina coladas are gonna be a mixture of rum, pineapple juice, um, cream to coconut, um, which gives it its coconut vacation feel, and then um, a little bit of lime juice. So this is gonna be a simple, easy cocktail to make. Um, and you have your choices of rums. I brought two rums today. So we have a, an aged rum. Um, and then we have just a, a clear, this is an age rum too, it's four years, but it's, uh, it's had all the oak filtered out of it. And so it's a clear um, rum. It's really up to you and pina coladas. I like to use it an aged rum. It gives a little bit more of a, a um, funkier taste to it, a little more in depth right there. But if you'd like it simple and clean and want more of the coconut and just pineapple, use a clear rum. Bacardi, I like Florida Cana. There's many out there. Your personal choice what you'd like to get. And you can get all this stuff at a liquor store or a grocery store. Cream to coconut, um, you can find most grocery stores have a, a bar section um, where they have all kinds of bar bitters and um, stuff of this nature. You can buy it. So let's start off with the pina colada. We will start off in a pint glass. Uh, I'm going to start off with uh, the cream to coconut, which is here. I strained it in. I'm going to shake it up. You can see little pieces of coconut that are in there. Maybe you can. There are. This has got the nice uh, coconut smell and taste. This gives it that sweetness to it. So I'm going to use three quarters of an ounce of the cream to coconut. Then I'm going to use two ounces of pineapple juice. Now this pineapple juice I juiced at home today, so um, I will always recommend juicing your own juices versus buying canned or store-bought. But if it's uh, quick and easy and you're doing a big party or anything like that, uh, it's buy a can of pineapple juice and make it simple on you. But I did juice this today with the juicer, let it sit, and then I sifted out all the pulp that was through it, that was in it. So we're gonna add two ounces of pineapple juice. And next comes the lime juice. We're gonna add a quarter ounce of lime juice. Just 
just a little bit to add, add a little bit more. And then the next is going to be the rum. I'm going to use Ron Zabaka. It's an aged rum. This is nice. I'm going to use two ounces of rum here. And as you see, I am using a jigger for everything. You can buy one of these at a liquor store too. Um, I prefer to use these even when I'm mixing at home. I will use these because then you can get the exact recipes that you need um, and that you like for you and whoever's over, and then you can alter them however you want. Um, then that's it. That's going to be a pina colada built in a glass. Um, today I'm just going to use a simple goblet glass here just to shake. So I'll shake it. Just ice it. Just take these hard and cold and as long as you want. Uh, we're diluting water into these cocktails right now as we shake them. Um, what you don't want to do is you don't want to put a little bit of ice in there. You don't want to just sit and shake like this because all you're doing is uh, barely mixing it around. You want to get in there and shake it hard. Don't be afraid to get into it. Like Sammy said, you want this to be frozen up so when it's frozen, you know that it's good. Break that open. Now I'm going to strain it. No need to double strain in here. This is our pina colada. When you get it right, it'll be the perfect pour right on top. There we go. Now I'm getting excited. I'm going to garnish it with a uh, pineapple. You know what? I've got these cherries here. I'm going to put a cherry on top and a pineapple mm. there and the straw. Excited. There you go. Pina colada. Oh, I just made a mess. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, got a little too full. That's a pina colada. You try it if you don't mind. It's like I'm in Mexico right now. Mm. Oh. All inclusive right here. And so that's the pina colada. Uh, you can mix uh, different fruits in there too. Um, I don't like to. When I'm making pina coladas, I like to do them just like this. If you're at home and you want them frozen, you like them frozen, take that same mixture that I just gave you and I'll give you the recipe at the end. Um, and you're going to throw it in a blender. Uh, put ice in it so it's um, level with the liquid, turn it on, get it as uh, icy as you like, as, uh, more like a Slurpee or something like that, however you like it. Um, blend it up, it'll be the same drink, just like that. It's delicious. It's a good one, isn't it? Yeah. I like this one. That's real. Could you add bitters to it? I Is there, could. there some recipes yeah. that you can? Oh. That's really good. That's really good. Yeah, I'm thinking of summer right now. And so that's the pina colada. That's good. That's a, a real simple, easy one. Three ingredient drink. Get to it, so I'll go over the ingredients one more time. So you're gonna have cream to coconut, pineapple juice, if I said three, I meant four, uh, lime juice, and then rum. Your favorite rum, whatever you like. So we're gonna start off with uh, three quarters of an ounce of the cream to coconut, two ounces of pineapple juice, quarter ounce of lime juice, fresh squeeze, of course, two ounces of your favorite rum, shake it cold, fill it with ice, garnish with the pineapple, enjoy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. That's the pina colada. And so let's see. So, <laughs> uh, okay, so next we're going to do um, a dessert drink. We're going to do a, a, a chocolate martini. Sammy's going to take over and do that one. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to her. If you have any questions, let me know. How do you make a paper plane? Uh, paper plane. Sounds good. Getting into bourbon. And, uh, paper plane is going to be bourbon, Aperol. Um, what am I missing? Bourbon, Aperol, lemon juice, and um, what am I missing? Uh, oh my God, you, you're, you're catching me off. It's right. all equal. Yeah. Uh, uh, Amaro Nino. Yeah. Isn't that right? Uh huh. Yes. Amaro Nino. So uh, I don't have all that stuff here. I do have. Um, Is it made with bourbon. rye whiskey traditionally mm -hmm. or just bourbon? Either one. Okay. We like to use rye whiskey. Yeah. We'll use Sazerac rye. I don't have Amaro Nino, a, a, a little bit sweeter of an Amaro. Um, then you have Aperol, which is an orange bitter and lemon juice, equal parts, shake it, put it on ice, or you can drink it straight up. Paper plane, those are one of my favorites. Or you can smoke and you can call it a, smoke, a smoke plane. Exactly. Or a plane crash, but people don't like that, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Smoke plane would be better too. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna turn the chocolate martini over okay. to Sammy. I need to get a pint glass. Here. Uh, Sorry, I'm just gonna clean up. Here, start showing them, I'll go, I'll go get them. Okay. You can start showing them all the ingredients okay. and we'll be right back. Okay. So, uh, so. Uh, first, I'm going to get martini glass. I like to decorate it into a martini glass using chocolate syrup. So I'll show you that once I find it. Oh, there it is. Okay. 
there she is. So any chocolate syrup, um, I forgot which brand that we use for this one, but we basically just put it in a bottle so we can easily squeeze it out and make a new design on that uh, martini glass or any glass really. Uh, this is actually Shayna's favorite uh, martini she likes to do. So uh, it's one of my favorites too. I love chocolate martinis for Valentine's Day or any day, it really doesn't matter. Uh, so chocolate syrup, and then we're also gonna use Godiva uh, milk chocolate liqueur, a little bit of Godiva white chocolate liqueur, uh, just a touch of Bailey's and vanilla vodka. Any vanilla vodka, we're using uh, absolute vanilla today. Okay, Thank you. Um, we, gotta, uh, we have about 10 minutes, so okay. I can do this in the old fashioned. Okay, okay. So I'm just going to so decorate speed, that uh, <laughs> high volume bartender right now. I'm just going to decorate this real fast. Sometimes I draw hearts or just make it special for people. But if you're doing it at home, just any design you want, uh, just have fun with it, you know. So I'm just going to leave that to the side. I'm going to take my pine glass. Then I'll do an ounce and a half of absolute vanilla. I'm going to use a jigger, actually, to jigger out this since uh, this is a little bit thicker and I need to, it's coming out a little bit slower. Where's that other jigger at? Um, oh, I found it. I got it. I'm going to be using uh, two ounces of the Godiva, I'm sorry, Godiva chocolate liqueur. Who knows? Dos. All right. Then half of the white chocolate Godiva liqueur. And half Bailey's. All right. You got all your ingredients in there, and then I'm going to start shaking it up real fast. Nice and frosty. Shaking will also make it a little bit frothy too. Make sure I get every single drop again. Um, strainer. All right. Let's get strained down to that martini glass. I like to do it nice and slow. Oh, yeah. Let's let no drop go to waste, okay? <laughs> So you can use what uh, a zester on top or a peeler or anything to um, grate some um, milk chocolate shavings on top or you do milk chocolate and white chocolate shavings on top. Um, you can make like little uh, curls out of it too, but um, what is this? That's a zester. Zester. Zest it over. So I'm just going to zest it over it. Zester is always easier. Zester. All right, that looks good. Just gonna tap that all over. I like my next chocolate. That's fine. Okie dokie. And that's it. You can add chocolate syrup on top of that too. Um, make a little heart, whatever you want to do. But um, it's good. It's chocolatey. Uh, it doesn't taste like alcohol. It's so good. But yeah, I don't know if you can see it. Mm -hmm. See it all right? Mm -hmm. Design sweet. So that was first the chocolate syrup in the martini glass, and then an ounce and a half of absolute vanilla vodka, two ounces of the chocolate um, milk chocolate Godiva liqueur, and then uh, I'm sorry, 
half an ounce of the white chocolate Godiva liqueur and half ounce of uh, Bailey's. Easy, easy, shaken with love. And then get that milk chocolate shavings on top, and that's it. Let me see. Okay. Let's have to taste it. It's all right. That's good. Very good. Excellent. Sold 10,000. Yeah, so chocolate that's good. All right, so okay. we have a few minutes left. Now we're going to get into the old fashioned um, for any whiskey and bourbon, bourbon people. This will be a good one. Classic at home. You can do. Um, yes, if you want to get a glass out with the, the three quarters out. So old fashioned. So old fashioned is simple. It's going to be sugar, bitters, um, water, and alcohol. Uh, got a couple kind of liquors and whiskeys here. My syrups. I mean my sugars. So being that you have many different idea ways that you can do the old fashioned. Classically, they used to do them with a sugar cube. You can just drop a sugar cube in the bottom of a, a, of a tin, and then you're gonna have what, uh, bitters. Bitters right here. This just adds flavoring to it. This is uh, Angostura bitters. It, uh, um, it's got like a heavy clove type uh, flavor to it. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I was trying to rush here. I'm gonna slow down a little bit. We still have a little bit of time, I apologize. We good? Um, so you can use anyway. If you put it, you do use a, a, a sugar cube. It's going to be a little bit grainy on the bottom. It will not dissolve completely in the shaker when you're stirring it. And if you like that grainy type feel when you're drinking your old fashions, I would definitely go with the sugar cube. But if you have that simple syrup sitting around, it's the same thing. It's sugar and water mixed. Uh, um, you're going to use like a quarter ounce of this simple syrup or that a little sweetness to the uh, whiskey, whether it be rye whiskey or bourbon that you, whatever your favorite uh, whiskey to use is of choice. Um, the sugar will just add a little sweet sweetness to it. You can make them as sweet as you want. You can take the sugar out and make them more uh, whiskey driven. Um, then that's it. And then we'll finish it off uh, with the ice, as you see here. Um, we like to use the clear hard ice. I don't know if you can see that right there. Um, these ice cubes, I'll take it out so you can see it. So those are, that's a two by two by two and a quarter ounce uh, ice cube. Um, it's clear. We call it clear hard ice. And basically what I do is I have uh, mold setups at home that I directionally freeze the water in from top to bottom and it pushes all the air and impurities to the bottom. And then when you're, uh, when I pull it out of the mold, all the air and impurities are caught on the bottom and I take a chainsaw, cut that off. Um, I'm left with a, a 10 by six by four inch clear block and then I have a bandsaw and I cut them into these shapes like this. I also have smaller ones that we use for other drinks, but this is going to be a perfect old fashioned. It'll top it off right to the top. Um, it's wonderful. So I'm going to start off with simple syrup. I'm going to use a quarter ounce of simple syrup right here. Um, just so I don't have to worry about the sugar, the graininess of the sugar inside the cocktail. Um, for bitters, depending on the flavor that you like and how heavy you like it. I like to use five big dashes. So I like to go one, two, three, four, five. Lots of bitters in there. Um, I'm going to make mine strong because I usually make mine a little heavy on the whiskey. Um, so that extra dash of bitters won't hurt you at all. I'm going to use rye whiskey today, Sazerac rye. That's like my go-to. Keep a bottle around the house at any time. It's good for uh, anything but old fashions for sure. It's going to be two and a quarter ounces of old fa uh, uh, whiskey. I will use the jigger. Whoops, I made a mess. Um, so we've got the sugar, we've got the bitters, and then that's it. It's uh, those ingredients right there. The next thing we'll do is we're going to take ice and we're going to stir this. Um, I'm not sure if you can see, but I'm going to fill this. this uh, I'm going to fill this shaker up three quarters away with ice. Um, before I start stirring it. I will not shake it. When you shake a cocktail, what you're doing is you're not only diluting it with, with water, you're also adding um, air to it. And we don't want air in there. We want to keep this clear. So we're going to stir this cocktail. So I have a little uh, stir spoon right here. It's usually you'll see the spoon on the end. Um, these are just simple. You can buy these at an online restaurant supply store. And then we're going to start, to, I like to saw, call it spinning my old fashioned. Ice will fly, fly, fly all over you and it will be lots of fun when you're at home. But basically what you're doing right here is you're just trying to spin it around the side of the tin. And we're getting this thing as cold as we did as we were shaking it. Um, with it being filled up with ice a little bit more, it's gonna take a few spins. I promise I'll clean up. <laughs> you're just gonna keep spinning. If, I, if I'm spinning at home, like I say, it takes 25 to 35 seconds to spin it right, to dilute it right, to get the right amount of water in there. 
but as you see, it's starting to get cold, so you can see that it's freezing up. You don't have to shake this thing. You can spin ice in a, in a, in a cocktail shaker and get it just as cold as shaking it. Once I get it diluted enough, I'm going to take a strainer, and we are going to strain it right over the clear hard ice. Look how clear that thing is. And then as you see, when you get the drink, you can't tell that there's an ice cube in there. And that's the point of it right there. So it'll sit there. The cold, the clear heart ice will dilute slower. Um, since there's no air and impurities in there, it actually melts slower. So you don't dilute your cocktails as far. You can take it slower. This piece of ice, we, we make these all the time and we'll give them to people and they'll take them home. You can usually get two to three drinks out of that big block of ice. Um, next, I'm going to use an orange peel. Uh, I don't like to muddle oranges and cherries. A lot of people will muddle oranges and cherries inside their uh, old fashions. I want mine clean. I want it smooth. I want it everything. So I'm just going to use the zest. I mean, I'm sorry, the, uh, the oils from the uh, orange rind across the outside of it. And then I'm going to pick it with the cherry and I'm going to leave it in there and make it simple and clean. So as you see, you can, I'm sure you can't see that right now, but these oils oh, are splashing good. all over the sides. I like to make sure we get them all over the sides because this is where that you're going to smell it. Simple. Those are your cherries. Here's too. cherries. Now these cherries at home, like I said, you can buy these at the store. You can buy like Luxardo cherries. Um, I buy frozen or fresh if they're in, in season cherries, and then I soak them in bourbon, maraschino cherry liqueur, vanilla bean, and simple syrup. Let them brine for a few days, and then these are wonderful. Try those at home. We can link those recipes if anybody wants to or not. Those are good. Then I drop it in there like that, and then that is a classic old-fashioned. And my eye is done just right. No, there you go. I'll let Sammy be the taste tester. And then that's an old fashioned. You, like I said, you can do, I like to use bourbon sometimes. Uh, rye whiskey's got a little more spice to it. Bourbon's got a little a little sweeter. So I do like to, uh, to use bourbon, get that little sweetness. I like sweet things. So I will, and I'll usually add a little bit more uh, sugar in it. Uh, two but, questions. Uh, yes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. First one is what's your preferred tequila and ranch water? Uh, uh, ranch water. Ranch water, I would say um, probably Casa Amigos. That's what I use most. Um, if I'm at a full bar, full stock bar, um, that seems to be the go-to that I'll use. But I like Dobell. A lot of people request. Yeah, a lot of people request. Love. I don't know if that's from marketing or if it's people like Casa Amigos is good. But I like Dobell myself. I'll use Dobell Silver with pretty much anything. Um, Dobell has Diamante too, so um, I will use the higher end uh, uh, stuff on like tequila, old fashions, and stuff like that. But Casa Amigos is a good one. Our final question is from our okay. CEO. Bill yeah, Knight. real easy. Okay, so okay. I, I assume you all don't have Connex coins. No, no. Oh, awesome. Well, this was a great uh, demonstration. Yeah. I teared up at many, many times, especially yeah. with that clear uh, uh -huh. old fashioned. Okay. My goodness. So, Chris, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. I appreciate Sam, you. So, thank the deal you. with these, yes, and this will resonate with you all, yeah. okay. is um, these are challenge coins. Off you know about military using a lot. We have American Connects. Okay. The entire board has a coin. Shana Thomas has a coin. Okay. If someone coined you and you don't have it, you got to buy them a drink. Okay. If you produce the coin, then they buy you a drink. They do. So that's okay. it. You're part of the club. But thanks right. so much. Thank you. I this is great you. stuff. Thank you very much. Learning very so much. much. Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Yes, group thank out there, you. Thank, thank you so much. Appreciate you. Thank you.